Yes, thank you so much for the kind introduction and respected leaders and friends. Thank you for allowing me to share this beautiful ceremony with you. Vice President Ulao, Governor Shmuel, thank you for your gracious hospitality. Um, it is a great honor to be with you. Ambassador Hyatt, Ambassador Tahiri, Rear Admiral Manoni, other distinguished guests. I'm joining here today in this, in this idyllic setting for this notable occasion. We're proud to, re to affirm our friendship, our nation's share, and I'm personally humbled to speak here in a land that has so much historical significance for Marines. 75 years ago, 1st Marine Division, and later assisted by soldiers of the U.S. Army's 81st Infantry Division, supported by sailors providing naval support from the mighty U.S. Third Fleet, engaged in a fierce conflict on this land. The Battle of Pelu stands as one of the great battles of our history. It was one of the toughest. The island of Pelu, ladies and gentlemen, this is sacred, hallowed ground for us. In this 73 battle, 28,000 Marines and soldiers and sailors successfully fought to gain control of the island. The American casualty rate reached 40% by the end of the battle, with over 2,800 killed in action and nearly 8,500 wounded in action. A casualty rate, ladies and gentlemen, that remains the highest of any amphibious assault in American military history, to include Normandy and even Iwo Jima. Of the heavily fortified and very determined enemy force of over 10,000 Japanese soldiers, nearly all were killed in action save for 200 captured personnel comprised mainly of, of foreign laborers. The Marines who fill our ranks today, we draw strength. We draw our spiritual roots from this very soil where so many of our predecessors paid the ultimate sacrifice. I'm honored to be with you all today as we celebrate our friendship and honor the service and sacrifice of those who helped make this all possible. Victory at the Battle of Peleliu had two noteworthy consequences. First, it met the military objectives of the time by providing a key strategic victory for the Allies, securing an island that would be needed to support the forces under General Douglas MacArthur in the planned invasion and eventual liberation of the Philippines. And second, although likely unknown at that time, as Ambassador Hyatt noted, it set the course for Palauan independence, following years of foreign occupation and control. 25 years ago, the world recognized the sovereignty of Palau under the Compact of Free Association Agreement with the United States. As we celebrate today, we honor our shared history and look with enthusiasm to a bright future with strong ties between the United States and Palau, and we recognize that we both have a great deal to gain in continuing to expand our partnership. And in the 25 years since the official recognition of Palau's sovereignty, this nation has accomplished some remarkable feats in its own right. This nation has made admirable efforts to gain a seat in the international arena. And on that stage, we're proud to call Palau a friend and partner. Palau continues to show the international community that it doesn't take a large population or a long history in international affairs to make a difference in the world. Mr. Vice President, Governor, Ambassador, you know what it takes. It takes leadership. Leadership made possible by the combined efforts of people working together for the common good. The United States Marine Corps is committed to nurturing the friendship our two nations have long enjoyed. We recognize that trust isn't something that's given. It has to be earned. And for our two nations, this means being present and working together to apply the tools and the resources necessary and decisively to effectively respond to the threats. This applies both to the physical threats to Palau and sovereignty and to the environmental threats caused by extreme weather events. Protection from the environment is a key consideration in all of our endeavors. And I applaud our Center of Excellence in Disaster Management helping to advance disaster management skills at both the political and the law enforcement levels. And true to our pledge 
and the Compact of Free Association. And there should be absolutely no doubt, no doubt in your minds. Ladies and gentlemen, we are dedicated to safeguarding the security of the Palauan people. While some international actors in the region seek to build influence through coercion and force, that is not in our core values as Americans. We champion a rules-based system. We recognize the necessity of maintaining both open seas and open lines of communication. And we will continue to leverage our military assets to ensure the preservation of these imperatives. By maintaining a military presence in this region, we are able to ensure Palau security. Our presence also ensures a steady stimulus into the local economy, backed by the defense programs that affirm our commitment. Under the Indo-Pacific strategy, the U.S. Department of Defense has increased the security assistance in the region with an additional $24.5 million in funding to enhance capabilities in the region, safeguarding territorial waters, conducting maritime and border security operations, counter drug trafficking, and transnational organized crime, and support and support to airport logistics. And you'll be pleased to know that a great deal of these will focus on supporting the people of Palau. Our, resor our resolve remains firm to make good on the promises we've made while looking for additional promises or additional opportunities to continue to develop our mutually beneficial relationship. Rest assured, ladies and gentlemen, our forces stand ready to protect the interests of our allies in accordance with the Compact of Free Association. But as you know, our relationship runs so much deeper than, the, than any legal agreement that binds us. It was forged in blood, sweat, and tears on this very island 75 years ago. And our Marines and sailors have had the privilege of participating in numerous events in this community over the, over the years to include cultural exchanges, infrastructure and construction initiatives, law enforcement training, projects in local schools. As we go forward, we continue to extend our hand in friendship and we look to bring a new era of prosperity, characterized by open sea line, lanes of, of shipping, open doors for cooperating, and open ears for listening to ways that we can continue to strengthen our ties through mutual gain. And at the core, at the very core, we are united by, by our belief in the democratic way of life. A core belief that governments should be chosen freely by their citizens and are therefore accountable to their people. Ladies and gentlemen, freedom isn't free. It depends on the dedication and sacrifice of those willing to fight for it. And I'm proud to highlight the veterans that are in attendance and the nearly 500 Pal Palauans who are currently serving the United States military in all branches of our services. These young men and women recognize that our two nations' interests are intimately intertwined and that they have made the courageous choice to work in the service of ensuring our collective security. I'm humbled by the selfless service of these men and women. And I assure you, they are making noteworthy contributions to protect the freedom of our nations that we so fervently espouse. My friends, thank you again for your gracious hospitality. It is a privilege to be with you, and I look forward to sharing in this celebration with you. I ask that you say a prayer today for those brave warriors who, who paid the ultimate sacrifice on this island 75 years ago. And all those who served here, who endured physical and mental wounds that, that lasted well after the last shots were fired. And finally, for the people of Palau, congratulations on achieving 25 years as a sovereign nation. May God always bless the people of Palau, the people of Japan, and the people of our United States of America, keep us united and safe. Semper Fidelis, and thank you very much. Hoorah.